And I just kind of said haphazardly, you know, guys, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen here shortly. I stood up to start shooting again, and that's when I saw Ty. He's out of the fight. He's in a fetal position at my feet. And that's the one that I felt any pain from. It felt like I got stung by a thousand bees. Ty introduces him to me, and I'm, I, you know, I'm like, hey, thanks. I'm glad you guys are here. It's great to have another gunfighter up here. Hopefully, we ain't going to need you. And uh, they stepped to my left and started talking. And it's getting on. It's like BMNT, you know. It's 30 minutes, beginning morning nautical twilight. It's that 30 minutes of time before the sun actually comes over the horizon. You can start seeing shadows. And I'm like, and I just kind of said haphazardly, you know, guys, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen here shortly. Because otherwise the sun's going to be up. And probably within the next three to five minutes, an RPG come out, hit the wall right out in front of us. Um, and a mortar landed on the wall, the top of the wall in front of Dave. And that opened up and they opened up with belt fed machine guns and AKs at us from down that aisle. How far away? Um, probably about a hundred yards, 150 yards. Okay. Um, Ty opens up, he had a belt fed. I open up with my M4. Glenn is actually moving kind of behind us. And I think he's I think he was trying to get separation. So we're all three not in the same spot. So we mm -hmm. can kind of get a crossfire going. And uh I go through a mag and I kneel, I, I squat down to change. I change mags and I'm starting to stand back up. Um, the next mortar hits and it hits the rooftop about 15 feet to my right, right where the wall and the rooftop come in and knock me back some. Um, and I stood up to start shooting again and that's when I saw Ty, he's out of the fight. He's in a fetal position at my feet. I turn back to start shooting, and when I go to start shooting, I bring my left arm up to grab my gun, and as I bring my left arm up, that's when I realize I'm injured because it's hanging off at about a 90-degree angle. You didn't even feel it? Uh-uh, because I'm just thinking of getting into the fight, and I'm swinging my arm. I'm sitting there swinging the thing, trying to make it work, and I'm shooting, and then the next mortar hits, and I kind of glance over, and that's when I see Glenn go down, and it landed just a little bit deeper into the center of the rooftop and cl pretty too close to Glenn. He went down. I turned back and started trying to shoot again, and that's when the third one hit. And that's the one that I felt any pain from. It felt like I got stung by a thousand bees. And I basically, I better get to some cover because the next one's gonna probably take me out. And I dove to cover. Um, and then I, everything went quiet. Um, and I s sat up and I was sitting in something wet and I thought I was bleeding out. And then I realized it took me a couple of seconds or it was cold, so it was water. Cause you know, they always have a water tank on top cause that's how you get water pressure for your. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so I got to take care of myself. I pull out my tourniquet. And I'm gonna start, I'm starting to try to hold my arm up and I try to put the tourniquet on and I see Ty over there. So I forget about, you know, I, I crawled over to him cause I was more worried about him than me and tried to find a pedal pulse. I find a pulse on him, I couldn't find a pulse. So I sat back up and went back to Stern and trying to put my tourniquet on. And that's when I saw a shadow come up over the rooftop, which was Tig. And Dave, the State Department guy, he had gotten injured from the first one. He took shrapnel in his head. And then the other three got him as well. His left arm was about off like mine was. And his left leg about six inches above the ankle was almost completely severed. Tig got up on top of the rooftop and got two tourniquets put on his uh, arm and leg, saving his life. And then he came over to me. And I always joke to kind of ease the tension of this kind of talking about this. I always tell people, this is where if you ever hear Tig tell the story, he's going to lie to you. And I'm like, because Tig says the reason he came over to me next is he heard some whining on that side of the building. <laughs> and I'm like, I was over there. I didn't hear none. Okay. So if that happens, I didn't hear none. I was, but Tig comes over and he, he walks up and I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm holding my arm up. 
and I'm grabbing my tourniquet, trying to get it on before my arm falls down because there was only a bit of skin here and a bit of skin here that was holding it on and a couple tendons. Um, I didn't know it at the time, but what happened is a piece of shrapnel went through there, disintegrated two inches of the radial bone, two inches of the median nerve, shattered the ulna, and came out on this side. And uh, so he comes over and he looks at, he looks down at me and he's like, hey, Oz, you might want to quit playing with that damn thing. You ain't making it any better. You know, that that joking around kind of thing to make lighten it up. And yeah. he reaches down, gets the tourniquet put on, and he says, hey, can you get over to the ladder? And I'm like, yeah. And I didn't know if I could. I just going to, because I knew in my mind, if Ty and Glenn are alive, Tig's going to be the one that can save them. And he's the only one up on the rooftop, so I've got to get over there. I can't. I'm not going to let him take me over there and then die from it. So I walk over to the ladder, and that's when one of the TF guys come up. Um, I think it was the Marine. Uh, he comes up and he says, "Hey, can you get down on the get down the ladder?" And I made the stupid mistake of saying, "Yeah." And he says, "Okay." I'm like, "Help me get up on the ledge, though." So he helps me, and so the ladder's right here, and I'm sitting, my feet are dangling kind of off the rooftop, and then the ladder's right here, and I'm like, and he leaves. And I'm sitting there thinking, so how do I get my ass off this from here to here? So the, t the ladder came up pretty high, so I hooked this arm under the, around that top rung of the ladder, and I figure I'll just slide off, and my body will turn, and I can land on the ladder. And uh, it all worked until my feet were supposed to hit, but my feet went through the ladder, but I, I mean, I had a death grip because there was no way my obituary was going to read, survive gunfight, survive gunfight, survive getting blown up three times, fell off roof and broke neck. I ain't going out that way, you yeah, know? Yeah. And uh, I was able to adjust myself, pulled my legs, got my legs under me, climbed down the ladder, and I walked around the building. I was heading to the front, and then I ran into one of the other guys that was coming up. He walked me into the building. Um, they laid me down on the floor. And uh, it was pretty much pitch black in there, and there was four flashlights. He left to go back up top, and there was four flashlights in my face. And uh, it was the deputy chief of base and three other case officers. And I'm like, hey, you guys got to cut my clothes off. I'm freaking bleeding for more than just my arm. And the only one that responded was the female case officer, and she ran back to where our med room was. And uh, there was, she, I could hear her going through, she was throwing stuff around and she says, I hear her yell, Oz, where was, where's the med shears? And I'm like, they're in the first set of shells, third from the top. And it goes, that's my thing is I would always, every place I'd go, if I could, I would take a, a water bottle and cut the top off and I'd tape it where our med room was and I'd put tourniquets, morphine and, uh, um, medical shears in there and always keep them there. It goes back to that 6P thing. And uh, so I knew, because those are the three things I need to save a life. Just like you said in your ADC pocket dump. Yep. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.